Hi everybody, welcome to Cage Minds. Normally on this show I'm talking to you when there's a big event coming up and we're doing a breakdown, my previews, my predictions. Well this time, this is Cage Minds MMA News. We're going to give you news from the week, important stuff that's going on in the mixed martial arts industry. So let's start talking about it. First thing up, Paul Daly. Paul Daly's trying to be one of the busier MMA fighters out there. Signed two fights for, for two months. It's going to be an extremely hard, I'd say, uh, perspective for him to be able to compete two fights in short notice. Two fights I'm talking about, Paul Daly is going to be competing at Bama 7 on September 10th versus Jordan Rabin. And also, Paul Daly is signed to headline Ringside 12 October 21st versus Luigi Fioravante in Montreal. Montreal, important place for Paul Daly. It'll be his first time back there since the infamous Josh Koscheck incident, throwing a punch after the bell, subsequently being released from the UFC. So it'll be an important night for him, seeing how the crowd reacts to him and everything. And also, if he can really manage to fight two fights in such short notice, be victorious, that'd be a great push and winning streak for Daly, as he is now mainly going to fight out of the Bama promotion. Also at Bama 7, Bellator fighter Jim Wallhead is going to go back to the UK on loan from Bellator to step in for Bama middleweight champion Tom Kong Watson as he'll do battle in his place against Frank Trigg. Both of these men have fought at welterweight and middleweight and should be an exciting, well-contested bout. Other news for, as far as Bellator goes, Bellator Season 5 is also going to be starting September 10th, the fifth season of Bellator. Love the tournament stylings of them. That that night is Bellator 49, and it is going to be featuring the quarterfinals from the welterweight tournament. Look forward to Bellator. Love the tournament format. It'll be exciting. Also news in Asian mixed martial arts, a promotion, one FC champ fighting one FC, one fighting championships, is hoping to become the UFC of Asia. They're going to be working hard towards this. They have a business plan. They're hoping to be more successful than their predecessors. Look forward to seeing their progress, seeing what kind of fights they put on for us. So that's all of the worldwide MMA news that I have for you guys. Now to the main organizations. We're going to talk about Zufa News and Strike Force News. They have announced that the winner of their heavyweight Grand Prix will win the trophy and be the next Strike Force World Heavyweight Champion. Now that that organization has split with Alistair Overeem, their former World Heavyweight Champion, a lot more riding now in the tournament, a big chance for one of the competitors in there. Also, Strike Force News, Chris Cyborg Santos, the woman's featherweight 145 pound champion, is done with her contract negotiations. She's back with Strike Force, hoping to be back in the cage fighting November, December card. News on that card also is that hopefully the heavyweight Grand Prix will be at that time. Also expected to be featured will be Gilbert Melendez defending his lightweight title versus Jorge Masvidal. Also in that Strike Force card, we should see the return of Strike Force of Keith Jardine, this time at middleweight. Really excited to see what he does at that weight class. Should be very successful for Keith Jardine. That's our Strike Force news. Now we're getting Strike Force news. Now we're going to move over to the other Zufa promotion, the UFC. Next bout coming up for the UFC is going to be the Battle of the Bayou, Jake Shields versus Jake Ellenberger. News from that bout already. Mackin Simmons are and Marcus Johnson are both injured and have to pull out of their bouts at prelim bouts at Battle on the Bayou. Demarcus Johnson, though, has already been replaced by Seth Bakneski. He will do battle versus Clay Harvison. That'll be an exciting, striking battle. Jake Shields, also, my condolences sincerely go out to him and his family as they're in a tough spot right now as Father Jack has passed away this week. But Jake Shields, being the warrior that he is, has announced in a little less than three weeks he will still compete at the Battle of the Bayou in the main event. I'm sure this is just going to motivate him and push him harder. Other news in the UFC. Are there spies in training camps? Quinter Rampage Jackson thinks that's a huge possibility, as there are rumors out there that he thinks people are spying on him for John Jones. Something about a phantom hand injury, and then John, John Jones' management is calling to see if there's still a fight going on. Rampage is mad about how this all got out, said he was only talking about it in the gym, and then it was all just a ploy to see if there was a spy. Well, things come out on social media, people say the wrong things, people don't keep secrets, so you gotta watch who you trust, I guess. As far as, I don't know what they could really be telling, we know Rampage, he's gonna come out, he's gonna strike, at most he's gonna wanna be in the clinch, I don't know what they could be spying on him for, but the weird stuff of MMA. Is it Spygate MMA? 
serious questions to be looked at. It'd be sad if someone was doing such a crazy thing to try to attain an advantage on another opponent, but I don't see how you get such a great advantage from that. But it could be out there, dastardly deeds. In other UFC news, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, fresh off of his victory on UFC Live 25, is going to be stepping in on short notice for Sam Stout to do battle with Dennis Seaver at UFC 137. Cerrone, a warrior, and he's gathering an even remarkable recognition from the USC is that as this will be his fourth fight in the octagon, the third on short notice, true warrior Donald Cerrone, him and Seaver, it'll be a great kickboxing match. Other news is that Matthew Immortal Brown will be stepping in for Pasakal Karras at UFC 138 versus Jonathan Hathaway in London. That should be an exciting grappling matchup, I'm figuring. Matthew Immortal Brown always looking for a finish, Hathaway. Hasn't been in the cage in a long time. We'll see how that one works out. Well, that's been the MMA news for Cage Minds for this week. I'm Michael Frankel. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.